Hey guys, this is Josh from Grappazilla, and today we're going to talk about how to improve your takedowns. Now we're going to go from um, an angle of wrestling, and which will impact your wrestling, of course, as well as your no-gi or anything that hasn't to do with a kimono or a gi or kurtka, etc. Okay? You see me doing ticks? I got Tourette syndrome, so that's why. Okay, so let's get to it. Taking an opponent to the ground is paramount in all grappling arts, and doing so can be challenging for many, as trying to do so on a resisting person can be extremely challenging. There are many amazing grappling styles that have great solutions to take your opponent down, and you will see many common themes within each style that are practiced and drilled correctly will lead you to achieving successful takedowns and throws. Now, it all starts with a proper grip and initial, po initial position, okay? A chain is only strong as its weakest link. And in, and in this case, it all starts with getting a proper uh, grip and body position to start the takedown sequence. It's paramount to understand all grip positions and your own body position needed to really attain a proper grip in comparison to your opponent, okay? So where your body is will ultimately lead you to which grip you have and how to hold it. Now, this can include where your hands need to be placed, where your head, feet and hips need to be placed in comparison to your opponents and where to place pressure with the grip itself, okay? Now, some common grips and positions that you should get uh, to know are the gable grip, S grip, the claw, uh, wrist and elbow, collar and elbow, uh, over under pinch grip, aka over under body lock, um, double under hooks, single under hook, uh, Russian tie, uh, front headlock, um, inside tie, outside tie, wizard of course, and baseball bat tie. Maybe I left out some, so sorry if I did, but those are pretty much the standard ones, okay? Now, you wanna practice just entering these grips and positions, holding proper body positioning and moving with some resistance while holding on the grips provided above, you know, the ones I just told you. Now, always remember there are small details, okay, that make a world of a difference in maintaining these grips and positions, and that'll help you really throw by mastering these grips and positions, okay? Now you want to work on removing grips and breaking positions as well, okay? After you're good at placing and holding uh, proper grips and positions, it's going to be time to understand how to break and disturb other people's grips and positions to initiate takedowns. Because once a, a grip or position is uh, broken, it gives you an opportunity to either counterattack or to defend, of course. But here we're talking about offense. Uh, a great example is breaking an opponent's collar tie into achieving a Russian tie for yourself, okay? Now, next, let's talk about footwork, okay? Now, proper footwork is, I would say, the second thing grapplers should focus on when trying to improve take, uh, takedown ability. And this means uh, both your footwork and your opponent, opponent's placement of feet in comparison to yours, okay? Now, generally speaking, um, if your footwork is not done properly, it can lead you to not being able to use full penetration and body leverage on the first actions of the takedown, thus allowing a better defensive effort from your opponent, okay? Now, always work on shifting your weight properly, moving your feet, using your back foot properly to push off, up, and being able to turn and pivot properly. These are keys, right? Now, the good news is that you can practice footwork solo uh, and with a partner with different drills. Um, some of the great drills you can do alone are uh, line drills so you practice the full movement over and over and over while moving forward in the line always staying in proper form and proper stance uh, next is shadow wrestling remember to use as much movement as possible for offense move forward back uh, side side circular motion etc okay uh, duck walks great for penetration development and um, it sounds weird but skipping it'll help you be fast on your feet okay now Here's some great partner drills um, to work off all grips and body positions, even light and start moving just to get them over and over and over to initiate the takedown, right? Uh, working on setting up takedowns from the beginning to the end um, with minimal pressure uh, to start with, but make sure your partner's always in the proper position as well, because if he's in a faulty position, it's not really gonna help you, okay? Uh, focus on placing your opponent's feet and hips in proper position <clears throat> through pressure in order to attain proper takedown positioning. This can be done by pulling, pushing, and lifting, all dependent on the technique you want to practice on, okay? 
Uh, I would say the next thing is uh, learning how to uh, initiate tax and create openings. This is like definitely a key, okay? So uh, no opponent, as you know, is going to easily give you a free meal. It's not going to be easy to take them down, especially in competition. So you're going to need to learn how to open the defense in order to attack properly, okay? Now, this can be done, for example, a snap down to front headlock. Uh, snap down to opponent resisting upwards and shooting for uh, a double leg. You snap them down, they go up and you shoot for double leg. Uh, attaining certain positions that allow you to control your opponent's foot placement. For example, a strong underhook, you know, and in inside uh, control can really uh, let you, with um, uh, pressure, move his feet so you can attack them properly. Uh, Russian tie to drag uh, to the back. You know, there are hundreds of variations, strategies, and techniques that can help you create openings and initiate uh, initiate attacks with a higher percentage of success than without doing this, okay? Now, here's another one that definitely nowadays has to be spoke, uh, spoken about because of uh, YouTube and into, uh, Instagram, etc. People want to get clickbait. So they show these takedowns that are just like, it's not going to work for the average Joe, or you wouldn't want to do that. It's not high percentage. So... What you got to do is focus on high percentage takedowns. Now, um, certain takedown techniques, okay, and throws have much higher chance of success, okay, than others. Generally speaking, the most successful ones are not the flashiest takedowns or throws, but they have noticeably high success rate. Uh, it generally comes down to the basics and knowing how to tie them together and chain, knowing known as chain wrestling, um, and that's. You're going to find you a lot of success if you get that. Now, a great example would be going for a single leg, uh, causing the opponent to bring the leg back and then hitting a shoulder throw opposite side to the leg. Okay. Next is definitely you want to build your game. Okay. Every wrestler or jiu-jitsu, even if you talk about gi, every, every judoka, sambo is, chilaoba fighter, boch person. MMA fighter, they all have a game, right? And you're gonna ba base your game upon what you feel comfortable with, right? So having many go-to moves is a must, okay? Um, for those who wanna dominate when standing, but make sure you have a properly thought out tech, uh, takedown roadmap, okay? So you can chain from each technique in, quick, in case they try to counter your, uh, your offense and then you're countering their counter if you can. Now, great um, way to build a proper uh, takedown game is to make sure your takedowns can answer the position of your opponent's hips. Very important in comparison to your hips. Okay, that's something that if you master that, you're going to be really successful at uh, takedowns. Now, another aspect is to make sure you have a takedown for every grip and position that is common. Okay, this doesn't mean to have hundreds of takedowns and you don't want to be a jack of all trades, you know. But to know how to perform variations of the technique from different positions and grips is a must, okay? You don't, and also you don't need to have a lot of techniques, but you know, you have to know how to use that technique from almost every position you get or almost grip. There's always some way to, uh, not always, but many times there's some way to land techniques from different grips and positions that you didn't think about, you know? And it can really uh, help you score, okay? If you get that done, okay? Um, a good example would be like you hit a single leg from a collar tie, inside tie, you can snap down, Russian tie, arm drag, and more. All of these are just setups to the single, yet each have a very different body movement to get to your goal of attaining that leg and finishing the takedown, okay? Next, increase your strength, speed, and flexibility, okay? Being stronger, faster, and more flexible is always going to help when you're trying to get good at takedowns. There's no doubt. All, first is technique, okay? And you have timing and other attributes, but these three you can actually improve uh, by yourself as well, okay? Strength will help you with lifting and holding positions. Speed will help you to get the takedown faster. And being flexible will help you with the range of motion and being more effective at placing your body where it needs to be without risk of injury. Uh, a proper strength and training program, as well as good emphasis on flexibility, will only help you to become a, a better athlete. And you'll feel this positively uh, when trying to take your opponent down, definitely. There's another one too, which it's gonna sound very weird, but I think if you really wanna get good at uh, no-gi takedowns or wrestling takedowns, even for jiu-jitsu, when you're practicing the takedown, try to practice it with wrestling rules, parterre rules, so that you, 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 um, you, end up trying to get them on your back 
And also you can flow better and your opponent will flow better to get to know the counter takedowns, okay? For example, if I go to take someone, they jump to the guard or they go to the back, it's very hard for them to counter from a, a takedown perspective. Now from jiu-jitsu perspective, sure, they can sweep, they can uh, go for submission, etc. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm saying if you wanna get your takedowns really good and your scramble really good to where you're always on top and flowing from technique to technique in chain wrestling style, you wanna probably do it with, with wrestling groundwork to start, you know? So don't worry if, if you go for a submission. Try not to get any back and try to scramble back up, okay? Now, um, final thoughts, okay? All athletes, all fighters, all wrestlers, you know, combat athletes, of course, can get better takedowns if they follow a logical plan and if they're willing to put the work in. That's the main thing, you gotta put the work in. Uh, having break takedowns is one of the biggest assets in grappling. It's one of the biggest asset, assets in uh, BJJ, Jiu Jitsu, wrestling definitely, MMA, you name it. Um, it's amazing to have that. And if you can take someone down and stop someone's takedown, you're gonna choose where the fight goes and you can really, really start winning your matches in a much more dominant fashion. Now, I hope this video was good. Uh, apologize if it wasn't, but uh, I think it was good. And I just want to say, if you like this video, subscribe and like, and uh, maybe leave a comment. If you have any ideas, any things, I'm always up to, to talking. Have a great day. Don't grab a zilla.